Um, if you think next year is going to be your best year ever, Fire's going to fucking love that. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, the, you know, the, the number of times um, shareholder value has been destroyed by people waiting uh, before they sell and then it being worth nothing. Uh, you know, I've seen this happen hundreds and hundreds of times. You should always be courting potential purchasers of a business. It's a healthy thing to do because it makes sure that you've got everything together, that your data room is up to date, that you're, if you're sale ready, then your business is optimized. It's doing the best it can do. So it, it keeps you on your toes. And of course, if an offer comes along, you know, I, I think too many people, because we have this traditional idea of retirement, which is working out soft until you're almost dead and then try and live off what you made. I think people try to take, take the same approach with business, that they need to keep this business for like 30, 40, 50 years or until it's worth a gazillion dollars. Actually, entrepreneurs have tons of energy um, and tons of ideas. And if you sell one now, even though you might get six figures or early seven figures for it, so it's not a not necessarily a life-changing amount of money, it's enough of a capital event that you now have time and money, which are the two things that entrepreneurs just never have. And with time and money, you can be really dangerous. You can get divorced, get an Aston Martin, you know, do all the... <laughs> Go that, become an alcoholic, go that direction. Or you can become a really powerful entrepreneur because all the pressure is taken off your decision making because you've got capital uh, and you've got the time to choose the right opportunities and the right thing to get involved in next. And I would say once you've done a startup, the startup is a rite of passage.